Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa visited the morning majlis of the late His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, where he offered profound condolences to the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the brothers and sons of the deceased, and senior members of the Nahyan family, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest the soul of the deceased in eternal peace and to bless his family with patience and fortitude. His Majesty recalled the achievements and virtues of the deceased and his efforts to build the modern state in the UAE, commending his role along with other leaders of the GCC in strengthening the GCC march. His Majesty wished President His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed every success in enhancing the progress and prosperity of the UAE and its brotherly people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to Bahrain after a visit to the UK where he met with Queen Elizabeth II, following a visit to the UAE where he offered his condolences to the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and to Al Nahyan family on the passing of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed. His Majesty had departed the UAE and was bidden farewell by the UAE President and a number of senior officials. His Royal Highness, the Deputy King Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadibiyya Palace. The cabinet expressed its heartfelt condolences following the demise of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan and recalled his efforts in bolstering GCC cooperation and his active dedication to public service and furthering the UAE's comprehensive development. The cabinet noted that the Arab and Islamic world have lost an outstanding leader. It congratulated the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on his election as President and wished him success in continuing to lead the UAE towards further growth and development and to continue the path of the nation's founder, the late His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. The cabinet commended the outcomes of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's visit to the United Kingdom to attend the Royal Windsor Horse Show at the invitation of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The cabinet noted the importance of the meeting held between their majesties, which follows the kingdom's commitment to supporting and strengthening the historical relations between the two countries. The cabinet expressed their best wishes to Her Majesty on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of her accession to the throne. The Cabinet approved the following, a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft law ratifying the agreement between the Government of Bahrain and the Government of the United Kingdom regarding air services, a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft decision to amend some provisions of the decision to establish the National Information and Population Committee, a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision on amending some provisions of the decision regulating medical examination and exp for expatriates, a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a cooperation agreement between the Regional Center for Quality and Excellence in Education and the Ministry of Education in the fields of science and research. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's responses to four proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed the following. 
a memorandum by the Minister of Works, Municipal Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning related to the digital transformation of 61% of services provided by Works Affairs and 51% of the services provided by the Municipal Affairs. A memorandum by the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs regarding the Masari project, which aims to refine the capabilities and skills of youth and develop their talents. The Cabinet took note of the ministerial reports regarding the visit to Morocco and the Hellenic Republic and the Kingdom's attendance of the Future Aviation Forum 2022 at the King Abdulaziz International Conference Centre in Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness Deputy King Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Saudi Minister of Energy, His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman Al Saud, at Qadibiyya Palace. His Royal Highness Deputy King emphasized the historic ties that unite Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, which continue to strengthen due to the commitment of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness also noted the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of Saudi Arabia, Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, to strengthen the bilateral ties between between the two countries. He welcomed His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz to Bahrain, who is visiting the Kingdom to participate in the 29th Annual Middle East Petroleum and Gas Conference. His Royal Highness emphasized Saudi Arabia's pivotal role in overcoming global energy supply challenges. He also highlighted the bilateral partnership between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia across various industries, especially the oil and gas sector. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of continuing to support innovation in the energy sector through collaborative technological development. His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Deputy King and highlighted Saudi Arabia's commitment to supporting Bahrain's Saudi collaboration. He wished Bahrain continued success and prosperity. The Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, the Chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior General, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Ambassador to Saudi Arabia to Bahrain, His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Abdulaziz bin, bin Ahmed bin Abdulaziz Al Saud also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Deputy King hosted a lunch banquet in honor of His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz and the accompanying delegation. His Royal Highness Deputy King Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Iraqi Minister of Oil Ahsan Abdel Jabbar Ismail at Qadibiyya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the oil and gas sector's importance as a mean of economic diversification that aids development goals. He welcomed Ismail to Bahrain as he is scheduled to participate in the 29th Annual Middle East Petroleum and Gas Conference. His Royal Highness noted the strength of relations between Bahrain and Iraq and the importance of further development ties, particularly within the oil and gas industry, to achieve joint development goals. He also expressed his wish for the conference to contribute to overcoming of global oil and gas challenges. Ismail expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and highlighted his commitment to furthering Bahrain Iraq ties. The chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and a number of senior officials also attended the meeting. The European Parliament's Committee on Foreign Affairs hosted Speaker Fozia Zainal in its meeting where the Speaker highlighted the comprehensive development in Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King and focused on the latest strides in the field of human rights. She stressed that the meetings between the Council of Representatives and the European Parliament reflect the relations between Bahrain and the European Union countries and a continuous endeavor to develop cooperation in all fields. The European Parliament's members affirmed that Bahrain is an important partner of the European Union and that the European parliamentarians are interested in hearing the Bahraini Parliament's viewpoints on security and political issues related to global development. They noted that the Council of Representatives' proposals related to human rights represent an important topic, stressing their follow-up to the efforts made by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in seeking advanced steps in building a democratic and stable society. Speaker Fozia Zainal met with Speaker of the Belgian Parliament, Elaine Tello, and President of the Belgian Senate, Stephanie de Hose. The meeting highlighted the importance of partnership between the two kingdoms' parliaments and stressed that this meeting constitutes a step towards translating the common will to build on the distinguished relations that unite the two countries. The Speaker pointed to the steady progress that Bahrain is witnessing in developing the education and health systems and the high efforts in it is recording in the field of human rights care. She affirmed that the reform project of His Majesty the King, which was launched more than two decades ago, has produced examples of success to be emulated. The Belgian Speaker and Senate President noted their admiration for what Bahrain presented as a model in the empowerment of Bahraini women to advance levels, especially in the political field. 
Speaker Fozi Yazinan visited the Emirati Embassy in Bahrain to offer condolences to the UAE leadership, government and people following the demise of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Zainal recalled with appreciation the accomplishments of the late regionally and internationally, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, visited the Emirati Embassy in Bahrain to offer condolences to the UAE leadership, government and people following the demise of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. He recalled with appreciation the accomplishments of the late regionally and internationally, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace. The Information Minister Ali Ramehi visited the Emirati Embassy in Bahrain to offer condolences to the UAE leadership, government and people following the demise of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The Minister recalled Sheikh Khalifa's memorable contributions to developing and strengthening Bahrain-UAE relations and praised his efforts in serving the Arab and Islamic nations to achieve international security, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace. The Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions 20th Annual of the Sharia Board Conference concludes in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, and under the patronage of the Central Bank of Bahrain. The conference is considered one of the most prominent gatherings in the Islamic financial industry, in which Sharia scholars and decision makers participated to discuss various topics and developments in the Islamic financial industry worldwide. The conference program included keynote speeches, in addition to six panel discussions with scholars leaders and experts in the Islamic financial industry. The conference comes with the aim of creating a suitable environment with which participants interact on Islamic financial operations with a focus on the legal alternatives to banking transactions. The oil minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, opened the 29th annual Middle East Petroleum and Gas Conference 2022. In his opening speech, the minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the participants in the global event and valued highly the unwavering support of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to specialized oil events that benefit the national economy. He indicated that the oil ministry and the companies affiliated with the oil and gas holding company led by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs always work hard and diligently towards achieving the strategic goals aiming to strengthen the national economy. The minister stressed the importance of joint global action to environmental projects aimed at reducing carbon dioxide emissions, noting that the kingdom has joined these initiatives by declaring its plans to reach zero neutrality by 2060. The minister commended the efforts exerted by the organizers to ensure the success of the event and expressed thanks and appreciation to the participants, speakers and sponsors, wishing everyone success in developing oil industries. Then Saudi Energy Minister addressed the meeting and expressed thanks and appreciation to the oil minister for his kind invitation, stressing the importance of increasing investments in the energy sector to boost the oil sector. Iraqi oil minister said that his country is recovering from the gap resulting from terrorist acts that had destroyed some oil facilities, noting that Iraq's oil productivity is now back to normal. Uh, I believe events like this uh, which bring uh, professionals, um, create uh, the, la the best platform to discharge certain messages, to make sure that uh, you are communicating and communicating directly with the right people and assuring that uh, you continue to actually breach what you do, which is being a responsible group of producers as such as our group as OPEC plus including Bahrain which is a member that we have continuously been engaged and continuously being forthcoming and certainly we have been part of the solution you have seen my presentation today where I showed how relatively speaking uh, oil markets have been stable relative to other sources of energy this is fundamentally important to share it to, with everybody. And as you have seen, I put it in charts, numbers, and the most updated numbers, including what happened to the market uh, on Friday. 
The French Embassy and the European Union delegation to Bahrain celebrated Europe Day at the Na Bahrain National Theatre, where many personalities from the Bahraini and European community and some members of the diplomatic corps gathered. Europe Day is an occasion to celebrate European peace and unity and to commemorate the historic Schuman Declaration of May 9, 1950, which embodied the first step in creating the European Union. The ceremony was made available by the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamay bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa. The first vice president of the International Organization for Sickle Cell Sound Amplification and the CEO and founder of Painless Universal and author of Painless, Living with Pain and the Search for Joy, Ms. Anne Walsh visited Bahrain to meet with senior officials to hold talks about the struggles and lessons she learned as a sickle cell patient and offer advice that she hopes that will not only others in the similar situation but their families and loved ones. In Bahrain, my work is really to amplify their voices with sickle cell. It's really to understand what is Bahrain doing regarding sickle cell and how can I help, how can I utilize my own self who's a sickle cell warrior and help them to spread this message around the world and get people to understand, especially people in India, Africa, Europe as well, where we have so many people now living with sickle cell diseases, is to see how we could take a sample point from Bahrain, who is doing such an amazing work. I mean, they are a center point, center of excellence. Take that thing from them, take our learning from them and spread it around the world. When you see Bahrain, they've made, managed to integrate it in terms of managing comprehensive care for people living with sickle cell disease. So many people have been able to go to kids, kids living with sickle cell, has been able to continue their education. They've been able to still do things that you know, even though the focus was on predominantly the pandemic, I just am being amazed on how they've advanced that and taken that in you know, skill set to help people keep the resources they have and better it. And also the Center for Excellence in terms of their screening program, their research, people getting on knowledge about sickle cell. I'm really amazed about the, um, the work they're doing here. You can live a life of fulfillment, go on to have kids, do what everything uh, everyone else thought you couldn't do. Bahrain has shown us that it can be done. Let's take it out to the world. And that's one thing I want that corporation to build out into the rest of the world. And I think through our organization, which is something where I represent the Amplified Sickle Cell Society, I want us to do that with, on behalf of with the Bahrain people. Um, I would just like to highlight the um, wonderful people of Bahrain for the kind hospitality. Um, I have to highlight Mr. Zakaria because he's been here. They, you know, he's the chairman of the Sickle, Bahrain Sickle Cell Society. The work he's doing to really engage the community. I would like to thank, you know, all the people who took the time out, Ministry of Education, His Highness, and um, the Crown Prince. All of these people who are actually working to support the Bahrain to make this work because this is a joint effort. You know, Mr. Zakaria keeps emphasizing that this is totally a joint effort he wouldn't have got to this point without their support and I want to thank all of them to keep doing this work and I hope that this partnership continues that we could expand it to the rest of the world and show the world that sickle cell it is a blood disorder it is a serious and visible illness but with uh, everyone's support like the people, way the people of Bahrain has done it we can solve the sickle cell problem and get people living pain painless with sickle cell.